The M1X MacBook Pro looks to be a winner if the rumors are anything to go by, but could the M1 MacBook Pro still be the right choice for you? Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Harmoon we uncover all kinds of tech. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that like button as that does support the channel. But today I'm going to help you decide on which one you should go for, the M1 MacBook Pro or the M1X MacBook Pro. If you don't know, the M1 MacBook Pro is a fantastic MacBook. It's fast, it's quiet and it's super portable, but with a design dating back to 2016 and with all almost no spec upgrades in the meantime. Some people are waiting for something new. We've heard a lot about the rumors on the 14 inch MacBook Pro and I've even done a video on it. But in the comments, there were some people still waiting for this model, even though it wasn't the right choice for them. So let me explain. The M1X MacBook Pro will feature a new design, which is exciting. Gone are the curves on the bottom and the top of the case following the iPad Air and iPhone 12 design language. It's going to be a slight change, but a nice one at that. The thickness of the current M1 MacBook Pro is 1.56 centimeters. And I think that we could see this drop down to around 1.4 centimeters because having a squared off design means more room in the case for some new tech and even some old tech. But I'll get onto that point later. So keep watching. The M1 MacBook Pro screen hasn't changed in around four years years or so, which isn't a bad thing, don't get me wrong, because it's still better than almost every Windows laptop out there, especially at this price point, featuring a 500 nits of brightness, wide P3 color, 13.3 inch screen. Most Windows laptops feature a 1080p display, which normally isn't very color accurate, or even a 4K display that's pretty bad on battery, but the MacBook Pro display is a 2560 by 1600 display, making it nearly impossible to see pixels at normal viewing distances with a pixel density of 227. However, there is some thick bezels around this screen, so there definitely is room for there to be more screen real estate. The M1X MacBook Pro will feature a mini LED display, meaning that you'll get much better blacks and potentially 1000 nits of brightness. I explain this a little bit more in detail in another video which I made, which I'll link down in the description. But basically we'll see similar tech that's what's seen on the XDR Pro display, which is a fantastic display. We will also see the screen size extend to 14 inches with a resolution from what I've worked out to be 2688 uh, by 1680 for a pixel density of 226. The reason for this resolution is that this gives us the same 16 by 10 aspect ratio that we've come to get used to on MacBooks since 2006, I believe. Watching content on this screen will be a lot nicer. And if you are a content creator, you'll benefit from this too over the M1 MacBook Pro. Apple typically doesn't conform to the normal uh, ratios and, and screen resolutions. They like to have custom displays for all of their products basically, because they like to focus on pixel density rather than just saying this is a 1080p screen or a 4K screen. They just rather say, look, this is a retina quality display. We make sure that it's got 226 to 227 pixels per inch at normal viewing distances. And that's what Apple tries to stick to. Looking at the ports, you'll get four USB-C, USB-4 ports. And the rumors are pointing to an extra HDMI and SD card slot. Yep, that's right. Apple are going to be bringing back these ports. The SD card slot will be a huge benefit for a lot of people with 3D printers and uh, obviously photographers and videographers, as there hasn't really been a USB replacement for those options, especially on the lower end of cameras. I know that Blackmagic and stuff, you can record directly to an SSD, which is fantastic, but other camera manufacturers haven't quite adopted this just yet. And a lot of creatives just love using MacBooks over Windows machines. So it almost alienated their user base when they got rid of the SD card slot. Now, when it comes to the HDMI port, I ran a poll on Instagram and YouTube, and a lot of you guys wanted the HDMI port back. So if you find having two ports limiting on the M1 MacBook Pro, and potentially don't want to keep using dongles or accessories or anything like that, the M1X MacBook Pro may be one step closer to that. The reason why I think HDMI, uh, having a HDMI port is so important for a lot of people is because 
normally in an enterprise setting, a lot of monitors in businesses still haven't updated to the USB-C standard. So all of them still run even VGA ports, let alone HDMI. So having a HDMI port really does make sense, especially in an enterprise commercial setting. There are also a lot of rumors regarding the M1X MacBook Pro getting MagSafe again, which would be great as it has been a lifesaver on previous MacBooks that I've owned in the past. But I do like the fact that on the four port model, it gives me the option to charge from either side. So going back to a MagSafe option, unless if they put it on both sides, it actually may be less convenient, even though it may be a bit safer. I would rather Apple design a cable that has MagSafe built in. Imagine how many people would buy this cable, not just for this potential M1X MacBook Pro, but for all MacBook Pro and Air owners. Plus, having a new charger to have in the box and to have around wouldn't make sense from an environmental standard. So I really hope Apple are looking at a MagSafe cable rather than giving us another new charger to buy. As if you're like me, you have a few chargers dotted around, like one at home, one in your travel bag, and another one in the office. So you aren't always left without a charger. I think that with Apple's new plans to get rid of chargers entirely, it doesn't really make sense for them to then introduce a new charger for a new line of MacBooks. It, it, it's kind of going backwards. So having potentially a new cable would make more sense. Plus imagine the sales that they would get from everyone else that uses USB-C. Now let's talk performance because this is a big one. Rumors point to this M1X chip having 12 cores instead of eight cores like we see in the M1. This will be divided into eight high performance cores, double what we see on the M1 chip, which has four high performance cores, and we'll see the same four efficiency cores. This means that if the multi-core score of the M1 chip is around 7,400, then we can assume that the M1X will be around 14,200 to 14,400, which means that in terms of the multi-core score performance, it's gonna be nearly double what's found on the M1. In the real world, this means that the M1X chip that will be found in the 14-inch MacBook Pro will potentially outperform an 18-core iMac Pro. So yeah, if you are looking for a lot of CPU horsepower, this is going to be a fantastic chip. The graphics on the M1X will also be impressive too. The M1 has an 8-core GPU, which performs much better than almost all integrated GPUs from Intel, but for some, it's just not enough. Having a dedicated GPU would be a much better option. And according to rumors, the M1X will have this level of performance. Apple is going to put a 16 core GPU, double what we see in the M1, which means that we should have similar performance to the highest end 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is worth over $3,500. This is the 56, uh, 100M with eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory, which on its own is about 700 to $800 just to upgrade it to that uh, graphics card. So if you are someone who is looking for a machine that is gonna be an absolute powerhouse in a small form factor, then this could be it. So this is all impressive, right? But this will come at the cost of battery life. I think if Apple doesn't increase the battery size, we won't see the same battery life as what's found on the M1 uh, MacBook Pro, as the M1X chip will consume more power than the M1 chip. It won't be a big difference. I think it may be similar to the M1 MacBook Pro, which will give us around 18, maybe even 17 hours of battery life, but that's still impressive because this will still last two to three times longer in the real world than the 16 inch MacBook Pro under heavy load with the same performance as the M1X uh, MacBook Pro, which is again, super impressive. When it comes to the 14 inch MacBook Pro, this will have base specs of 16 gigabytes of unified memory. So double what's found on the M1 MacBook Pro and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. Again, double what's found on the M1 MacBook Pro base model. You will be able to upgrade this to 32 gigabytes of unified memory and you can store it all the way up to four terabytes if you wanna fully spec out this thing. So this sounds amazing, right? 
like why would you go for an M1 MacBook Pro? Well, let's talk about pricing. Apple still currently sells the four port Intel model for $1,800, which has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. But this is strange because this is actually slower than the two port M1 MacBook Pro, which is about $500 less. The only benefit of going for this model at the moment is for the two extra ports for you to connect more stuff to it. And obviously you can connect more than one external display to it. So why haven't we seen an update to this model yet? Well, this is because the M1X 14 inch MacBook Pro is gonna step in. For years, this model hasn't been enough value for people to upgrade from the base MacBook Pro. So Apple sells far less of this $1,800 model than you might think, even though it was faster than the base model, because the price to performance really wasn't worth the extra $500. But if Apple introduces the new 14 inch M1X MacBook Pro to replace this model, well now it gives a reason for people to spend the extra $500 because you'll get much more value compared to the base M1 MacBook Pro. So this means that this new M1X MacBook Pro could cost at least $1,800, maybe even up to $2,000 if Apple decides to up the price like they have done with the iPhone 11 versus the iPhone 12 by an extra $100. This means if you are someone who was gonna go for the M1 MacBook Pro and were thinking of upgrading the storage and unified memory, then I would recommend you wait because the M1X MacBook Pro, even though it might cost you an extra $100 to $200, you would be getting a much better MacBook Pro for your money and it would hold its value much better than a spec'd out M1 MacBook Pro. However, if you only have a budget of $1,300, then just get the M1 MacBook Pro because the M1 X MacBook Pro is gonna be far too expensive for you. It's not going to be priced at $1,300. The 14 inch is made for people who want performance for their intensive applications. So if you are someone who just runs 10 to 15 tabs in your internet browser and uses Word applications, and every now and again may push your system like once a week on a random YouTube video, then just go for the M1 MacBook Pro or even the M1 MacBook Air in most cases. If you have a strict budget of $1,300 and you are a professional that does long renders or uses Blender, then get the M1 MacBook Pro as it will have better performance over long periods of time for intensive workloads than the MacBook Air, which could cut your render times by around 10% or so in my findings. Otherwise, I would recommend you just getting the base M1 MacBook Air and maybe even upgrade the unified memory to 16 gigabytes for that longevity. I would personally go for that than a base M1 MacBook Pro. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on what you think about all of this and which MacBook are you waiting for or potentially gonna be picking up. Also, check out the links down in the description below to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. But if you wanna see more from me right now, you guys know what to do. I'm gonna pop two videos right over here. Click on one of them. I know you're gonna love it. Just go ahead, click on it, interrupt me. I don't mind if you click on it. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.